All right, everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Just uh, chilling in nature, enjoying the loss of the sunlight for the day. Um, had quite a positive response from the last podcast me and Oakley did. And um, this is just an intro to um, say that, um, yeah, we're going to do more of these and um, we're going to cover a wide range of topics. This time round, I'm going to be hosting. Is it, I'm going to be hosting part one. So I'll be covering with Oakley the topic of like Watiko and you know NPCs, how that relates to targeted attacks, um, energy extraction, trauma, mind control, um, the idea of developing mental devices, which open portals in the subconscious. Um, psychedelics as a tool for um, spiritual cheat codes, um, reincarnation loops, that sort of thing. And um, yeah, so just um, if you're interested, then go on to part two on Oakley's channel. Um, we, talk, we talk more about the hive, um, nature, and this sort of built in entropy. Um, modeling out time in terms of like the timelines shadow work um, psychological manipulation that sort of stuff and um, i hope everyone's doing well and um, take care out there and i shall see you for the next one so um, adios Is it? Okay, there we go. Yeah, you, oh. you're right, mate. How's, how's things going? I'm good, man. Um, tough, tough week. No, tough couple of days, actually, um, from uh, getting hit with entities and whatever else. Um, I've heard a lot of people have been going through this last month or so, so I'm not taking it too personally, just what it is. Um, but we'll talk, we'll talk about it, and we'll go through uh, this evening about attacks and energy and, and and things like that we'll, we'll touch upon all of that today so we'll see how we, how we go with that so uh yeah been an interesting an interesting couple of months actually uh quite an intense couple of months personally and uh, like i said i know a, a lot of other people have been going through uh quite a lot of shit themselves so uh there's a lot going on internally and externally as well so uh yeah it's uh it's been tough and at the same time liberating and finding out more about who we are and what goes on in this realm and and, and how we deal with it and, and everything else around that so uh yeah quite interesting so how you been anyway yeah yeah i've been i've been okay um i've been quite creative the past few days but it has been a recurring theme amongst other people I'm in contact with who've actually been saying that they've been experiencing something whether it means something or not I don't know but um, the fact that we're having these conversations more is uh, something that I don't think this hive mind kind of demiurgic entity or like what I mean what one of the things who we want to talk about today was like with Tico and how it operates. Um, it's one of the things that it doesn't want us doing, the fact that we're talking about it and um, sort of resolving or filling in the gaps that we miss in ourselves, which we might not necessarily be able to do speaking to or interfacing with the NPC population. If they want you in it, then they're going to do everything to make you fear like looking into this sort of stuff and to just get you involved with their program so that you become, I guess you just become entranced in whatever it is they have going. Yeah, yeah. What well, have you noticed for yourself personally? Um, well, for, for me, I've been feeling more and more liberated and excited and a lot of things in my life uh, are the same as they were before but um, I'm making a lot of head headway with um, some of my own personal 
projects and um, I guess it, it makes me feel good but um, I think for, for me it's just more coming into contact with other people and actually realizing that um, the kind of stuff that I've been thinking about for years um, is not doesn't warrant insanity which is what they kind of make kind of make us want to think we are because it, it is a minority um, and just how uh, just how like um, this thing kind of creates in each one of us our own unique circumstance at which it can loose energy and you know like just speaking to you and you talking to me like there's certain things that doesn't affect me and it seems like um you know they, they affect you quite severely and also issues that i have that might not affect you but it, it's very interesting that this thing has you know it's predisposed us to be you know like you know epigenetically from our parents and also the kind of situations that it's put us in in terms of our environment you know where we're born um how we're brought up the kinds of entities uh, or like hosted npcs that come into our lives to kind of affect it and turn it in one way or another and just how um each of these things have kind of created our own personal kind of matrix or trauma and you, i don't really get to talk on such a deep level about this with a lot of people because they're very much so <clears throat> scared to go outside of this box that this thing has orchestrated which is just very much <clears throat> part of this you know it's created the human it's created the survival mechanism it's created this kind of glitch where it can then capitalize upon the expose and weak aspects of the human mind how sort of um, vulnerable it is to to trauma and then you know we kind of get put into our own personal bubbles like where one is not able to see the other it's kind of like how um earlier i explained the issues that i had in regards to like lon loneliness being in a crowd yet not ever feeling understood and also having to interact you know work-wise with the npc population but um you wouldn't you you only felt it because the emotion was was generated but other people wouldn't feel the same thing but at the end of the day it's, it's a personal emotion and it, if if you don't feel it i can understand how psychopaths do what they do but yeah one of the themes i've seen with with Tico is that it it kind of puts us in our own abstract bubble that's kind of you know suspended and we're all separate from each other but it has this dominating effect of subjugating the species through basically the enslavement systems is generated as government yeah 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 it's um well the, their biggest tool is obviously fear isn't it and they get us they create the traumas when we're children they set up the circumstances they set up the people to create those traumas for us and then they re-trigger them when we're adults into yeah energy extraction and for creating their reality and what they want and not what we want as awakening beings and i'm seeing it lately quite quite prevalent in how they're doing this and how they're ramping this game up and really going for the attacks quite quite strongly more and more and just just by reading like a comment section on a few videos over the last few weeks it is quite apparent how the attacks are going on now and how much trauma is being brought up from people from from this because 
I don't know if they're maybe losing their grip in some way and they've got to up up their game on their end by by really going for the attack and but it on the flip side of it for them up in their game and, and hitting the attack each and every time like for me personally there is an attack go on like yesterday morning and it's lasted into today i've had to work through it profusely you do come out the other side stronger and more wise and more knowledgeable and having built more tools and knowing more about yourself how to combat the attack and then when you look deeply within yourself which i have for the last day and a half on how to alleviate it keep happening and going around in the circles like we were talking about earlier like we go around in these circles well i do anyway i go around in these circles and uh, high energy low energy high energy low energy and they create a high energy state they set up the circumstances in life which build upon a good time and then they'll crush it on purpose to put you back in a certain state from for me what i've been seeing they've been getting me with uh, addictions so i gave up smoking tobacco a few months ago three or four months ago then i went back to it maybe three weeks ago or so and i kept trying to up my willpower to no, i don't need it i don't need it and then i'm just all of a sudden i've got a cigarette rolled in my hand and i'm smoking without even thinking it's just so automatic and then i've got some guilt and shame come up because i've smoked it and then i watch my health slowly deteriorate over a week or so i watch how the tobacco interacts with me and how it brings me down with energy and how and when i've got to a certain low energy state the guilt and shame all interwined with everything else, whack, they'll hit an attack. And it's usually in the form of self-worth issues, guilt, shame. Um, so the, I don't really have this issue too much, but it can pop its head up, what others think of me. Um, and But the, big, the biggest one I would say would be, would be guilt. And I mm. think that would be i think i could speak for most awakened beings that that is one of the biggest ones they get with is, is the guilt mate and it's it's working through that and going back over your life when you can and re finding your triggers and facing them because it's difficult a lot of people don't, don't, don't i don't want to face them sometimes i mean i'm open to it and I, I say all the time to the spirit you know show me Show me, show me, show me my deep, deepest, dark, darkest aspects of myself, the repressed everything that's there that they're using to trigger me. Please show me. Now, my spirit or the spirit, whatever you want to call it, will not show me everything all at once because there's a lot to process and it obviously doesn't want you going back into those low states and keep processing and processing. So you're, you're giving it at the stages when you're ready and you're giving it in small chunks so obviously you can process it and rework through it. Um, I'm quite impatient. I'd rather be hit with it and just go down for six months and just work through as much as I can. But I mean, I have done that in the past, gone through really deep stuff over, you know, deep, dark night of the souls over like year long periods. Um, but it's not beneficial all the time to go through this while you're trying to lead a normal life, if you like. Yeah, yeah. And I think um, as as a reflection of this thing, like the the institutions are just not adequately set up for people to even be like aware of this kind of information you know in regards to to shadow work they have some attempts you know through like cbt cbt therapy like cognitive behavioral therapy which is actually the shadow work but they just haven't exactly recognized it and it's very focused and sort of hyper specialized for one particular thing um so yeah there's that but like relating to the point that you made about um you know this high and low energy i think um <clears throat> for for me i have my own issues and i'm aware of them 
like now when I've, I'm in a high energy state, um, I'm speaking to you and I'm laying it out on the table so it can be seen. Um, but, you know, there's times when I just finished work, I've got no energy to think, to read anything, to do anything. And then it's kind of like my mind just sort of blanks out. And then I just go back to my bad habits, you know, just eating bad foods, uh, smoking shit, um, that sort of thing. And, you know, it's it's like I, I but that, I think that's just the whole, the nature of being here in the body is like our spirits are kind of, at least my spirit is kind of repulsed at the whole situation of nature and um, stronger organisms having to consume weaker organism and this this need for me to like perpetually energize my body such that I can maintain my mind and a sense of balance within myself to like orient these psychological energies and see them for what they are once once the body like dissipates like then this thing seems to get its tentacles into the lower aspects of our being you know more of the monkey the monkey mind or the the reptilian brain and it's like this just like with everything else here this duality this like tug of war you know in 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 the same way of the physical we try to maintain the body you, you try to do that mentally as well they're both deeply interrelated but um yeah i think maybe just trawling see because it, it, it's done whatever it's done to us affected giving us traumas when we was very young and then for some people it's too much to uh, process consciously so it's pushed to the back of the subconscious mind where something like 95 percent of what the activity of our minds is, is going on in the subconscious and like as i'm speaking it's not me in the moment speaking it's like an it's an effect of whatever constitutes like my subconscious and and the unconscious um kind of like a the ego which we're interfacing with is this layer above this more complex like domain that we just can't get a head around but the, the reason why i'm going into this is because these these programs these loose programs it, they're like um because they're in the subconscious we create it's created this kind of i call it a mental device in the same way you would build a physical device in 3d reality they've created a device in your head that allows them to extract this energy or you could think of it as um portals to other dimensions i call it a portal to hell all, yeah. all these different forms are basically portals to hell um but a lot of the time it goes to our ego then we experience it then the npcs just get affected by it whereas where there's something observing our ego that we can actually feed it back like consciously to kind of reorient the mental device um it's easier said than done um i i i struggle with my own issues and um you know it, it just goes to the point that we can rewire our brains and restructure this device but i think uh as you get older and especially as like your mind prunes itself because mm -hmm. like neurons in the brain yeah. they're quite lucid when you're younger but then it starts to decrease in volume the amount of neurons and then it becomes more refined more set in place yeah <clears throat> That's why I think things like psychedelics are good for um, activating neurogenesis, the creation of new pathways. And um, was it um, neuroplasticity? That's right. Yeah. So it's the yeah. rewiring of, of the pathways. Um, so it, it's very interesting. Yeah, there's a, the, the point of the psychedelics take us somewhere, but it also 
opens up new like portals, as you might say, mm-hmm. overrides other kinds of portals, and um, yeah, it's very, it's all interrelated. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting you say about <coughs> excuse me psychedelics that I've used them my whole life, and I think it's helped create or keep rather my childlike picture and me open to new ideas all the time and not be that rigid because the neural pathways didn't develop in such a rigid way where most people my age i'm 48 now so most people my age would what i notice in them anyway they are quite rigid and set and they can't really break out of it and even when I see some people my age waking up, they seem to have quite a tough time even contemplating different ideas Mm. because of that. Yeah, that plasticity is is not fluid enough for them. Um, But funny enough, one one of my friends that I I grew up with at school, he he has done a considerable amount of psychedelics. Now, he is always borderline always been borderline waking up and never fully embraced it it's always listened to what i've said but 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 has followed the the normal script of life you know the the family the big house the cars the business and whatever else but of late i am seeing him ask more more questions or at least he will he's noticing changes in the external and he's starting to question now more but like I said, he'd done a lot of psychedelics when he was younger. And I do think there is something to psychedelics that real really help us um, stop being consumed as well by the ego so much. Yeah. It does for me anyway. It keeps, keeps me in my spiritual heart more and more. And funny we should say about psychedelics is I was actually due, due to do them. Uh, I was going to do some uh, mushrooms. Uh, what are we today? Is it Sunday today? I was actually due to do them Friday, Thursday, I believe it was. Um, but my partner's boss decided to change a, uh, a shift for her at the last moment within 24 hours. And we watch it play out how we then we couldn't do the mushrooms. And then it got changed again. And I got angry, really, really angry at it all. And then we went, oh, we'll, we'll, it's all right, we'll, we'll do it Monday. And our shift only got changed again. And we, went, like I said, we watched it play out on how the uh, Wetiko, the AI virus, whatever, it worked its way through my partner's boss and how it was played, <laughs> played off on us. So we couldn't do the uh, the mushrooms uh, because of her work schedule so we've we've rescheduled that obviously because I, I won't be pushed around by the batiko demiurge but i won't be pushed around but it's funny how they get in into other uh npcs or sleepy souls uh to disrupt our lives and what we need to do because the 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 wetiko know that me doing psychedelics puts me in more of a open hearted loving space uh i i feel quite powerful i drop the ego i drop my traumas i become a human being i've become a spirit embodied in a human being and they know that and they can't fucking stand it nick so they'll do everything they can to try and stop it um and we just have to work around it and 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 one of the biggest things is trying to keep a, a sense of humour through it all. And like I said, I did shout and I got angry. I wasn't shouting at my partner, I was just shouting into the air. And um, and that drove in then a sense of low energy. And then what happened was some uh, some anxiety come up and that built quite strongly to the point where I had to calm myself down by going into like deep breathing state and meditative state. And it took around 45 minutes or so for me to calm down out of that state. And then I watched the anxiety stay with me all through the day, yesterday, into the night, didn't sleep well at all, and into the morning. And it got to the morning and I was like, fuck this, I've had enough. So I decided to just go inwards and meditate for about four hours, maybe five hours. Um, 
to see what the issues were around why I got so triggered, why I shouted, and how are they getting in with this anxiety and what they're doing. And I did I did find some some old triggers because what happened was my partner said to me, you reverted back to a 12 year old. And I went, right, OK. Why did you say 12 year old? And she said, I don't know. I just felt it, it was a 12 year old coming through. That was she said that yesterday. So this morning when I went into the, the, the meditations to try and find some answers, um, a an incident come up where my uh, one of my grandparents died when I was 12 years old. Mm. The situation was that my mother had answered the phone and she screamed and she fell to the floor and she didn't stop screaming. She went into despair. That triggered me into a state of despair and upset and I started crying and I started not so much screaming but really crying out loud and she my mum then attacked me and oh. attacked me quite physically and verbally and what happened was as 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 the meditation was unfolding what I was watching back was I then wasn't I didn't have the ability to grieve my grandparents uh, my grandparent dying and the whole process around that I was suppressed with it um the whole lead up to the funeral and everything around it I was suppressed and so I've watched it played back um, throughout the day to day and I went you know what that could have been a big reason how the demiurge got through to me today uh, yesterday and triggered that off because I had unresolved uh, grief so I, I I do want to feel the grief from it so I've asked my spirit show me the grief I want to go through the grief of it and feel that and, and, and release it so so the so the batiko can't have another grip on on situations around that and it's by having the courage to go in and do these things because you do have you have to have courage he's very uncomfortable doing this as you know going in and doing internal work is he, uncomfortable um and and sometimes for people can be downright terrifying and i've been there i i understand and my heart goes out to anybody who um undertakes this process nick I, you know my heart goes out to them and I have this sense of awe and absolute honour for anybody that goes through this process because I know how it's difficult it's been for me. The outcome from it is positive and it is strengthening and it does open your heart even more. And the fucking Demios can't stand it. So I love doing it. I actually love going in and facing my shit and facing the trauma and all my programmes and all the shit I don't want to face to fuck them up basically and to create the reality that we want and to um alleviate the traumas in as many as we can help whatever, yeah. whatever that way that is even if it's just someone listening to this podcast today and resonating with some words and having a release or a, a remembering or a knowing or whatever it is from them that's that's enough that's 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 good enough you know um actually i'm lying it's not good enough i had i actually what we was discussing earlier about how we can go forward helping more people through these things you know and developing something where we could set up some i don't know um trauma-based therapy coaching counseling um something around that you know would be fantastic I I used to do a lot of coaching for people years ago and let it go to the wayside because of my own shit that I had to go through. And uh, I'd like to, I, I really look, would like to pick yeah. it up and, and yeah. see what that leads because a lot of people are having shit right now. Really yeah. tough shit. You're having tough shit and I'm watching people around me having tough shit. Yeah, well, I, I feel like a lot of, uh, there's a lot of empathetic people in this community and we've all been affected by this entity in our own unique ways and doing this is a healing experience because you know I've noticed stuff in you that isn't necessarily true you know detrimental things that you would say about yourself in regards to self-esteem and you just take a you just take a step back and look at the facts and it's everything's okay 
but it kind of um, we can we can all facilitate that process like for each other. It's created these kind of blind spots in all of us, and we're just kind of we're all being triggered in our own unique way that just kind of like pops into our reality bubbles and then kind of modeling I mean I, I think especially a lot of people who are aware of this this entity are targeted like specifically um, to kind of deter them from the path or to kind of pressurize them you know now that peer pressure doesn't work and you're leaving the survival instinct and being you know the threat of being ostracized from the tribe in there has to go after you like in more subtle ways and it will try and get that through like the various circumstances that it's imprinted in time to set up these traumas because <clears throat> you know these these timelines that we're in from a fifth dimensional perspective it's already been laid out and it can be fully seen to a similar scale or similar in a similar way to how we can perceive distance. So it, it's kind of, it's like a supercomputer. It's printed out these events and we have been affected. And we are an effect of the machine's consciousness. But um, so like our script is to just be in between the lines. It wants to house consciousness, which does the shadow work and becomes aware of the meat suits, the, the catch of the meat suit. And um, it's got to try really hard. But I think it's like we was talking about in the last um, podcast that it's really quite a perfect, futile attempt. Because the more it does that, instead of keeping us in check as it wants to, you then, you know, this pain, all this um, negativity gets you asking questions whereas the NPCs they accept fate as what's given to them they say oh you know oh that's just the way it is that's how the world works you know when, we've heard that so many times and it's, it's a cop-out in not in my opinion as like as a fact like they they've create they are saying that okay um someone's imposing a reality onto me and I accept it yeah. Out, of, out of free will choice if they had free will yeah. maybe they do have free will and they've it, very early on they've made that decision because I remember when I was very young and I re- look back now in retrospect and think that this is not the usual question that like someone at the age of like seven asks but I was remember just kind of staring at a wall and then saying I have a, ch- I have a choice between like basically because I noticed the other kids were just doing what the teacher said and just believe things on face value or they would say things that's based on an opinion that's not like is substantiated by anything. For me, I'd see something and then think it's not as it appears. There's something more going on beneath the surface. So there's, there's a choice there. Maybe people, maybe most people, if what well, it, in regards to the NPC thing, I think uh, I don't actually look for the truth in whether they've become that way. You know, they might have been sold and then posed that question very on, then decided to go down that route. And then that's what it's the effect is an NPC. So it doesn't matter to me whether they are truly soulless beings or they just have a very dim light within their like mental sphere. Like what what I think's happened is, um, and this goes hand in hand with the traumas and what Watiko does, um, they've created this kind of mental, I'll talk about the mental device and then feedback loop between the unconscious, subconscious to your conscious, then then back in. So basically harvest, harvest louche. Well, they've done the same thing with their perception. So like, I guess if we've made the choice to become sovereign then we've created a kind of we've opened our own portal and we've created a loop in our head that orients our perception back to ourself and it's a sense of 
not this religious kind of, um, I will just give away responsibility for generating my reality to some alien, to some external. It, it's more, now it's drawn inwards and questions are asked. So I always say like, I look at the animal kingdom and then I see, I ask what, well, what separates animals from humans? Because you can teach, um, you can teach certain apes like um, like gorillas or chimpanzees sign language, but what they'll never do is they'll never ask a question. To my mind, that's what distinguishes. No, humans ask questions, but what questions do they ask? Yeah, 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 and that's the important question. <laughs> what yeah. are they asking? Yeah, maybe this is what is manifesting now in the external where i'll call it the squeeze the, more the squeeze comes is that manifested for people who are still sleeping to awaken because as their life becomes more uncomfortable that should inspire one to ask more questions because mm. It was being uncomfortable when it was actually downright fucking trauma that got me asking questions. And it's been a lifelong internal battle since since I was a baby. If I trace it back, which I have traced it back many times, the attack started probably uh, definitely definitely uh, as a baby, but maybe even in the womb, the attacks could have started. So mm. I see the the way this works that i take it as a blessing that i got attacked so young as probably you did as well and many of us do so we awoken through through the trauma state and the people that have had more of an idyllic life or a lot free from trauma and just a general um upsets in life maybe the odd bit of grief lose losing you know loved ones or whatever and you know the, the, the life ups and downs but nothing too traumatic maybe this thing that's going on now is, is really for for those to step up and have unfortunately some pain because no matter which way we look at it it does seem to be pain that wakes you up when okay. i in you know uh, joyous blissful states um i'm very comfortable don't really want to make moves don't really want to take action yeah and i, I don't think it's pain that, um i mean i don't think it's pain for the sake of pain i think it's um like we've got a limited set of tools to get out of here which is and however we go into the circumstance i don't know but if it is that we're creating our reality and we're deciding we're consenting to this alien sadistic entity to like impose upon it through our consent yeah for our consent. then then what tools do we have to work with other than that of what it is so fears corrupted uh self like this watiko thing um so i guess it thinks that it it thinks it's it's trying its hardest to impose its will on us but it's actually doing the opposite but i feel like we've also set it in motion not not that not from the new age perspective of oh you know like this suffering is all good it's for our own spiritual growth and evolution it's just that that's the fucking tools we have here I don't, I'm not a new age. I don't want to reincarnate, come here to do, to do that again. But it's got to, it's got to squeeze me so that I can actually see like the rawness of what this reality is. Yeah. And, you know, the way that I've been treated by this hive mind, like what does that, or like you or anyone else, like what does that in creation? There's this outward hostility if you go against like the hive, which really is a cult of death. Yeah. Every, every, every point you look at it is some kind of entropy. And then, then you ask like, okay, so what is it that they want? Okay, they don't want to leave you alone because they, they've always got to get involved 
in, yeah. with your yeah. attention. They were, they want your mind. They want your time. They want your attention. That's why you, that's why you spend time. Or you is it? Uh, you pay attention and you spend time. Sure. But they, they, they've kind of, they're even telling telling us this. But then you think to yourself, okay, what do they want? And then it just seems to be. Uh, it's just it's just death. So, okay. I'll just use this. I've set it in motion. It thinks it's got me, but I'm using its tools against it. So I've arrived at this point of my consciousness through the very mechanisms that it's designed to subjugate me, but it can't do that. It's it's like trying to hold sand, but it just runs through its fingers. But I mean, it's just. Uh, it's just crazy and it rewards i think it, it rewards you if you comply with the program yeah. that's why these guys who have made that choice to create the thought loops that like orient their attention away from them, themselves it's like i guess sh- i don't know it's, it's like shooting a gun and you're just like you, the targets in front of you but you're like just like turned around like shooting in the back of your your head so it's like these is people can't find any points at which they can gain a grip on them, then their true self. So they just like made as a byproduct of this hive mind. And um, that's why they, they can't understand like what we're going through, because they're actively being encouraged and rewarded by the society. We're going against it because we're saying we can clearly see it's death. We can clearly see that it's it's literally the enslavement. It's the destruction of the entire species, pointing it out, then they continue to have they continue to have kids with not because they enjoy their life, but they will like say, let's have, you know, it'll be by accident a lot of the time, or they'll say, let's have a child because they're my immortality into the future. They are they can fix the world's problems that has been just is a problem that's just been import, imposed on this this soul but to kind of justify the hive mind's life it, it, i think if you really get to the core of it they're not they say that they're happy i guess maybe they are but if there's any sleepy souls in there they're really they're deluding themselves <coughs> really so it's just this very, I think that this place is like wading through thick mud, being in quicksand. It's this very sticky situation and there's all these, there's constant duality, there's perpetual paradoxes that can also be reconciled, yet yeah, it's this constant it, it, it's always a problem somehow, even though, like conceptually, they should be reconciled. Um, like life and death, this ordering, order and chaos. Um, yeah, I, I just it, it can make you go feel like you're going crazy. But are, are you really going crazy, or are you just pointing it out for exactly what it is, out there in the open? No one wants to recognize it because, as you said, the process of doing the shadow work is extremely painful because you're basically deprogramming what this thing imposes into every human on this planet yeah. for its little farming operation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, an operation, sure. Um, it's... Um... It's the definition of crazy. We look crazy to the NPCs because as we deconstruct our mind and reprogram, we become more of the spirit, more of our true essence. And our true essence in its raw form is very eccentric and doesn't give a fuck and just want, does what it wants to do. And if it wants to walk backwards down the street, um, you know, playing about with a balloon, it wants to, it doesn't care. And that looks absolutely crazy to a normal person. (laughs) 
So what the funny thing about all of this is that the majority of people are actually insane completely. Yeah. Uh, they again will look at people like us as insane too. Yeah. Which, which is I mean I always say like if 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 someone calls me insane or weird, that's a compliment because I'm doing it, it's a good sign that I'm doing exactly what I need to be doing. <laughs> to not yeah. be Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. I do you know what? Um I got called the weirdo, the oddball and everything. Oh, from early age, eight, nine, ten, I can remember that those those quotes going around from people, and it's 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 always been there, you know that I'm I'm the crazy one or, or whatever. I mean, over on the marina, they they they, I think I mean a lot of people do think I'm nuts over here, but I mean they they are quite kind. They call me they call me the guru, <laughs> which is well funny because uh, I won't stop being me just to please an NPC. You know, I mean, there is quite a few awakened beings over here, so it's 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 quite pleasurable to to be here. But the 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 ones that are still like sort of really NPC in it, they 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 don't know how to deal with you because that's how they see it. They got to deal with you. They can't just interact and talk and and just be. They, they, they the, something goes on within within them mm. that is challenging for them just just me being in their presence like you being in an npc's presence you don't have to say anything or do anything just being in their fucking presence upsets them <laughs> you know really really challenges their being and their energy and um yeah they, they like i said they yeah. just they just think we're fucking nuts it's, you know it's not so unequivocally yourself and yeah. they don't have a concept of self because they're merged into this blob yeah uh, that yeah. there's yeah. no they can't give you anything but it yeah. but it attacks it attacks because it, you're okay so like it, okay people say you're saying uh okay you're dehumanizing the npcs because you're saying it's them it's, it's them and us i'm not even saying that it's it's one physical thing at the end of the day but i have to use language now that's Okay, fair fair point, but why would somebody come to that? Why would somebody be brought to that stage? As if I can't see any individuality in a person and they don't want to, you know, like anything that has benefited this so called society has come from the mind of individuals because anything that is created in the human world originated in the mind. Sure. And we're, you know, the only agency that is never comes out of a hive mind it always comes out of the introvert the, the, the introverted mind um so the like there's no i mean that's another guilt program by the demiurge to make you feel guilty about the dehumanization aspect so i'm, I'm not dehumanizing i'm just saying what it is they don't have any individuality and you know, and I'm talking about like an extreme archetype. It's obviously like a, it's a spectrum. Um, but I, I have also met those kinds of guys who are at, who are at the extreme, and yeah. more more dominated by like the animal soul, than something that you'd say is like self-aware. But it's interesting in terms of the mechanisms of the hive mind because, as you said, like, because they can't, they don't have in. Uh, they don't know how to deal with you. But I was saying because they don't have individual aspects of themselves. They don't want to develop that. It's this religious mindset of, hey, you know, this thing has presented me with the script of reality and I'm just going to download and accept it, and that's who I am, whatever this thing has defined me as. Yeah. And now you're basically saying the only way we can have an interaction is if you show me... So what you are, it's, it's either going to be you have to concede to them or they concede to you. And in most places like a workplace, you have to do that because they've it's ruled by the majority. This yeah. is yeah, this is an NPC world. It's very plain, very boring. Um, but that's that's what the demiurge wants them to do, and they love it. Um, but I, yeah, I have to concede to them um in their way of thinking and talking especially if you want to do business 
if you want to exchange any money trading and bartering or whatever else you normally have to concede to their way of thinking to actually get them involved to do a trade with 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 them otherwise it's not really happening at all they're, they're gonna feel that they can't trust you so in a way like people say like this is a game you have to play the game mm. or the npc game for that interaction to get yeah. that going otherwise it's, it's, it's not going to happen I, I look at it like because i do computer programming i look at understanding Watiko in the same way it's it, it's it's a robot it's it's a machine because it, it hasn't got any innate creativity in and of itself and but there's a code that it runs on that that you can like decipher and figure out now that's a very that that takes a long time and a lot of hard work because it not only involves looking at the external it also involves the, the shadow work what I was talking about because it's understanding the programs that it's done to you which is part of your own personal deciphering yeah. of the code because you can see you can see other people's um, blind spots but how can the mind that perceives can't see its own blind it, it can't illuminate its own blindness because it is a byproduct of that which yeah. created it yeah um, but yeah, it's like um, they want you to, you know, be in line. And like we were saying earlier as well, like they, uh, if you get to a point where you have sufficient distance or freedom from the hive, they will they'll send someone in to come yeah. and. I mean, I I don't I, I haven't I guess I haven't disclosed this on my channel until now but like i had i had an old channel um the rebel foundry and yeah i had to shut it down basically because um i there's basically a bunch of there's a, some dark cultists in the area they knew i had some involvement in them not knowing what their true intentions were right. yeah basically came with their physical presence and um yeah it's basically pretty it's a pretty dangerous situation i had to get out of there and leave leave the town i don't yeah i probably won't get into any more than that but like they they'll literally the hive will literally send agents demonically possessed npcs you can't i know some people come like targeted individuals that sort of thing and that's when things really get really weird and science fictional but it's like people say oh you know life's very straightforward it's and some people even get bored like I, I got some people who I've known from school they um they're doing the same thing they're still watching Netflix all night playing video games and or just getting drunk on the weekends and I think to myself I've got so little time for the things that I want to do yeah how the fuck are you bored? Yeah. But it, 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 it makes it makes perfect sense once you figure out what's going on with them. Because they're they're part of this Watiko thing. And it even it even prints out time to be perceived like slower for them. So they get more everything's easy. Everything's they never go against the flow. They go, you know, everything's handed to them on a plate. But is it some like I don't know, like delicious cake or something, or is it is it rotten fruit? <laughs> but they 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 love the rotten fruit. They love the rotten fruit. Really <laughs> what you were saying about the um, how they print time that uh, they have more time. Yeah, do you know what that just rung true? That yeah yeah they give them more time, and they take time away from us mo most definitely because I mean as as we know when you're perceived to be having a good time time seems faster and when you're not time seems slower so there is a there is a differential in time itself and how it plays out so yeah why not why why won't they uh, give us less less time and i i certainly feel it too um just you know just day to day that i want to do this this and this and i'm like maybe i want to do five different things maybe i'll do one i'm like where the fuck did the day go <laughs> yeah oh, completely i mean like 
Um, I mean, I've touched on this before, so I won't go too deep into it, but just like fucking making food just does my head in because of the time it takes. Yeah. yeah. You know? And uh, just just general maintenance of the of the human vessel itself and what it's got to be done just for its maintenance is so time consuming. And then, you know, and then you've got to make money. All right, I've been very lucky there for the last few years because I've lived off my savings and shit. But that, you know, that's that's that has to change at some point and uh, go back to making the money thing again. And I, I, I'm like, I scratch my head around thinking, how the fuck am I going to have time to make any money with all the other shit that I want to do? Mm. So that went back to what we were saying earlier about maybe creating something around where we can sort of help people. In a, in a, like I said, in a psychology, counselling, coaching sort of way, maybe, where I'm doing something that intrinsically gives me joy, because that does give me joy helping others. It really does. It's probably the biggest thing that gives me joy. And we're earning a buck as well at the same time, you know. And then the moral issue fucking comes in as well. So, uh, oh, my God, I'm making money off of waking beans and um, yeah. selling oh you know you know exactly where i'm coming from that's that's it, just the fucked up aspects of it really. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. it's so it, it's so ridiculous it's so absurd yeah it happened. and there's 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 nothing wrong with that like people are okay i i, I am skeptical of people who like offer courses and things like that but i think for people like us there's there's nothing wrong with that because at the end of the day like i you know i'm going to be honest like we're we're all we're all selfish but we have to be for our survival because if there was unconditional love here in the in matter you like if someone embodies that you'll be taken advantage of like you know there'll be someone who sweeps in to take everything yeah that you have yeah it's it's all literal condition it's literally conditional here um even our relationship, but I, you know, obviously, like, or I'm not reducing it down to some cold, like, calculate conclusion, like, because what we're talking about here is being informed from outside this place where where there is unconditional love and we can speak about these topics, but we're here and we're using this language, like, we're not even telepathic, like, we should be able to know what we mean without you know we're speaking and it takes forever to make a point yeah. with that with, with language yeah. um but it's just uh <laughs> oh, i think my mind's gone a bit blank um what was i gonna say oh yeah so we're basically we're we're all selfish um and there's nothing wrong if you put the effort and the time in to making a, a package as long as you're not scamming people sure. it's okay to trade your time like for for money which is just an exchange of energy yeah. at yeah. the end of the day even for this kind of knowledge you can still you can still charge for it because it's it's because it's not okay, okay so it's the catch because you might want to give the knowledge away freely and i feel like in an ideal reality i would definitely be yeah. I, de I definitely want to do that for sure um but uh oh, fucking hell <laughs> they're getting in ya yeah, they, they are they are they're getting they're getting out of you mate oh. i mean sometimes pick up this shit in for fun yeah. No. Sorry. Oh, it's sorry, mate. It's the um, motorcycle. Oh, no worries. Um, well, what I said was, you can keep some of this stuff in for fun. Like when you're doing the edit, you you'll see. Like, oh, I might just keep that bit in and, and whatever else for like for whatever for fun. For, oh yeah, like blooper, blooper. Yeah, for for rawness and to see people, you know that you you know you ain't running off a fucking script and you're just you're getting hit by the. Uh, by the wet eco and yeah, then trying to, like trying to crush your fucking thinking and uh, trying to trying to stop the flow of it all because I watch it myself as well, mate. I, I see that you know something comes in. I'm going to say it. Uh, it's pretty much instant. I'm not really thinking. I'm just I'm 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 I've sort of um, listened to what you've got to say, 
um, not really ready to respond, just wait for it to flow through. And uh, yeah, you watch the blank, and then like for me anyway, there's a little bit of panic <laughs> goes on <laughs> if it's not flowing properly. I'm like, oh shit! That's the thing, like, have you ever had a train of thought and then it just gets cut off every time I make a video? And then I think to myself, wow, like, what? There's literally nothing. Yeah. How yeah. did that happen? That, yeah, yeah. It's it's how they get you. It's like um. I always thought it was some sort of mental illness <laughs> or some sort of fuck up from like the amount of drugs and drink and, and that <laughs> had over the years until I realised I was actually oh right yeah now they're doing that on purpose they're, they're, they're stopping you actually thinking you know so I mean the, the the drugs might have just might have created some open some pools that are just there and you've got like loops then and yeah I yeah. mean the amount of the amount, of, the amount of drugs I did at UD was just like, um, I, f I think I did brain damage, but cool. <laughs> I was doing a bunch of um, like research research chemicals, which was really bad, like <laughs> like like designer designer stuff. But, um, right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, that's all I'll say. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I had a good time. <laughs> I did have a good time. At uh, the detriment to my evolution, maybe, or <laughs> but I still had yeah, a good time. Yeah.